Okay, so a uh, video for showing how to do sequential programming via ladder logic. So what we have on the screen, fellas and girls, is uh, a method of being able to develop a sequential program from basically what is usually only ever deemed to be a scan type program software. Um, so what we need to do is, first of all, we need to figure out what our sequence is. I'm just going to type it into the top here under the block title. Uh, I'm just going to pick a random example of an A plus I'm going to say then B plus, I'm going to say that B will go minus straight afterwards, and then we say A, go mi A goes minus. Okay, so that's two double acting cylinders, control B, two, uh, five, two double solenoid valves. We're going to say we're going to have a start button and a stop button that's normally open and normally closed. A very basic electro-pneumatic sequence. We're just now going to control it via um, PLC software, but in a sequential manner. Okay. So, the first line isn't overly critical straight away, um, we'll develop it fully in a wee minute. Um, but, needless to say, the, the sequence of that A plus, B plus, B minus, A minus needs to have a starting condition. Uh, in your actual uh, coursework piece it tells you that it's a start button. It also tells you that the stop button should go until at such point that it turns off as such. So, what we need to do is we should hopefully realise that we should have uh, a start stop maintained. Okay, so something that latches itself on and stays on for a period of time until such time as the stop feature turns it off. So we should have a start, uh, a stop. So I'm just going to say my start button is going to be 4.0, I4.0 that is. Uh, I'm going to say that... Um, maybe fix this in the tag table. Four point zero, and then I four point one, and if I just quickly nip at the tag table to fix these, Okay, so what we're looking at is start, stop, maintain as such. Uh, we obviously need an output. We're going to use a memory number. Let's go with 0, .0. Uh, Obviously need the bridge around that. And it's going to be the same output as well, um, 0, 0.0. So that's our starting condition for the whole circuit. And that when the start button's activated, now remember, although this is normally open in the program, that because the stop button itself is wired, is normally closed, this particular I4.0, which is our stop button, would be active, which gives us a pathway through to tag 6, which is M0.0, and it obviously latches itself on. We can use that M0.0 as a method for the rest of the program to allow it to run or not run, is the case. So we just need to include M0.0 at the start of every single network, like so. So that's our run light, if you will. So I could hop into here, uh, M0.0. Called run flag. Okay, so any time that the start button's been pressed, it latches on the circuit, keeps on the run flag, and it stays that way until such times you press the stop button. Now, this basically becomes our first line, which is to do with the reset. So I'll just put it in here. And it will only allow the machine, as such, ours is a pneumatic sequence to start when it's in a certain position. So we need to detect that it's in a certain position. Um, just by reading off the A and B extend as the first two features, we can obviously assume then they must be retracted to start with. So that means that as long as we have the run flag on, which is obviously set by the start button, we could then say that we need to read in that both, um, we'll call it, a in, and we call it B in, and let's just label those up. Uh, they won't appear just yet, that's right. Better give them I numbers first, 4.2 and I 4.3, and go in and label those. So... I4.2, I was going to say it was AN, BN, 
And I'll just add a couple extra ones in here of B out, which I want to be uh, I 4.4 and And what else do I have? A out. Which is I4.5. I'll add in the outputs here just while we're at it to save a bit of time. We'll just call it uh, B plus, which will be Q4.0. Oh, we've already got 4.0. Well, B plus probably, let's, let's change that slightly actually first. So A plus will be 4.0. <coughs> A minus 4.1. B plus and then B minus. In sequential order from 4.0 to 4.3. So that gives us our four outputs to control the solenoid valves. So what we need to make sure is that the run flag is on, so the start button's basically been activated. And as long as the two cylinders are in their attracted position, you could even go a little bit step further and you could say that as long as uh, B out isn't activated and A out isn't activated, you could go a little bit further just to make doubly sure as such. Um, there's no huge benefit to doing that. But just showing you that you can include multiple reset commands. So basically, from here to where I have programmed at the end. These are all conditions that must be made about the machine before it starts. That then will activate an output for us that's going to be um, M0.1. And you just start going up in order with the M numbers. Now, what we want to do here is actually change this to a set. Okay, You haven't necessarily come across these overly much. Um, but that's the one we want to have. Now, we need to run over and over again with a same basic principle, which is the next line when we see that in one wee second. So when M0.1 is activated, the first thing that should happen in the sequence if you go up is A plus should happen first. So what's happened so far? We press the start button, and as long as the stop's obviously not been activated, turns on a run flag which obviously keeps itself on. As long as the run flag is running and the machine is deemed by these four conditions to be in the reset position, it sets M0.1. And as long as M0.1 is active, it's going to then um, set A to go out at this case. So you then set A plus. And then what we're able to do uh, from this point is to have a repetitive sequence. Usually you keep these to the end. Um, what I can maybe do is leave each of the outputs until the very end part of the sequence. I can move the networks down further, but you get the idea in one wee second here. So when M0.1 is activated, and then the bit that goes straight after the M number is going to be the condition every single time. We're going to have an arm open of you have to sense when A has reached its extended position. So the first thing you, you've done is send A out. You then need to, to detect when it is actually in the out position. So when A is in the out position, it then is going to set a new number and it's going to reset the number before. So the new number is going to be M0. Point, and then we've already used one, so we use two now. And we turn off the one that was just used. So M0.1 gets turned off. So what we're able to do is you should be able to, I think it works with the software, you can copy and paste. So I'm just going to copy and paste, as you can see in there, the same shape. I know I've got them labeled up at the minute, but that's really... You know, regardless of the point, I can take those out just so they're sitting empty. Okay, so the very first thing is you send A out, and when A is in the out position, it sets M0.2. 
Okay, when M0.2 is activated, all right, the next step part of the sequence is to make B go plus. So if I nip down to the output section here, and what I will do is I will actually move this network down to the bottom. Place one new network in. So anytime M0.2 is activated, therefore B plus should happen. So if I hop up here. So the thing that's happened so far, just a quick recap. You press the start button, which starts your flag, M0.0, that's your run flag. As long as it's running and the machine's in the right position, it sets your M0.0. Or M0.1, sorry. M0.1, if you look at it down here, activates A+. So A begins to extend. So it's then reading off this line here, because this one's active because of the set. And when A reaches its out position, it then turns on M0.2 and turns off M0.1. Therefore, this line becomes deactivated straight away. And then if you go down to your output section, M0.2 tells B plus to go out. Okay, then you just need to read the sensor again. When M0.2 is on and B is out sensor, is red, you set the next number, M0.3, I think we're up to. And then you reset M0.2. So you go down to your reset. Let's just copy and paste. You've got M0.3 must make B go minus. Because that's the next part of our sequence. You go up to this part of it again. And what you're going to read is if M0.3 is activated and then B in sensor is red, you then set M0.4 we're now going on to and you reset M0.3. If you go down to your outputs again, just copy paste. We're now moving this on to M0.4. As long as it's activated, it should make A go minus. And then the final part really is that when M0.4 is activated, and then you finally read in that A is in the minus position, then, well, we only really need to reset at this point. You could set again the original one at the start, which is M0.1. Okay, which in this case is, so we're going to reset M0.4, we're going to set M0.1 again. And that's the one that keeps cycling through now. Okay. So, you've got the start condition at the very beginning that latches on M0.0. You've got your reset section that tells um, M0.1 to activate and stay on only when the, the machine is in the start position. And then you have a sequence of four networks that are almost identical. Obviously just the numbers change, but the, the, the process of them is exactly the same. And then you've got four networks at the bottom, which are output conditions. So, quickly running through. The first thing that happens is you set M0.1 once the machine's obviously run. If you go down to the bottom, you'll see that M0.1 activates A+. So A plus cylinder begins to extend. M0.1, this is activated from the line before. And then when the A out sensor is activated, it then sets M0.2 and turns off M0.1. Then M0.2, you read it from down the bottom again. That one activates to B to go out, and it starts to extend. And then up in this line, you're reading M0.2, and when you read the sensor for B out, it just sets the next, turns off the one before. Right? Then that makes B come back in. Then you're going to read the B in sensor, set the next one, turn off the one before. Read the next sensor, set the next one, turn off the one before. So that's setting S um, or M0.1, which goes back to this one. Um, for M0.1 and it's waiting on A8 because just remember 
that M0.1 here is making A go back out. So that just keeps going. The sequence goes over and over and over again, but always in order. And it will only stop when you press the stop button and it deactivates M0.0, which means this line here deactivates and M0.1 can't be activated again. Okay, that's, that's a rough way. It's not obviously the, the correct answer that you need uh, for the coursework, but it's an indication of how to structure a program like that. Any questions based on that so far? No. Good.